very best he can possibly be. It's, it's all that because Rafael has the eyes for it. He, he really uh, studies Jiu Jitsu a lot, he has all the tapes, he knows more about my game than, than myself. So it's, it's, it's a great thing. To, to train, he's really concentrated on helping not only the team as a whole, but everybody individually. You know, he puts a lot of effort into making sure everybody understands where they're going with their game. and you know. You know, he's a guy from Oklahoma, you know, who just comes out and dominates on the entire world scene, you know, it's just not, if someone was going to say, oh, you know, this is how it's going to go down, they probably never would have expected to see some kid come out of Oklahoma to the best in the world. Very humble. He doesn't boast or brag about his accomplishments. And, uh, and I'm, I'm actually more proud of him for that, what kind of man he's become, than for all the titles. Uh, like I said, to me, that is just a byproduct. That's just um, the icing on the cake. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu itself, I started when I was around 12, 12 years old, and uh, but I, I grew up doing martial arts my whole life because um, of the influence of my father. He had been a longtime martial artist where I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. He was an assistant instructor at a Jeet Kune Do Academy there. When we lived in Cincinnati, um, I always tried to associate this with fun. And um, I would take Rafael with me to the uh, Kali Academy. They had a basement there. And I would always go early and get in a good cardio workout, do some bag work, and he would mimic me. You know, as I was, you know, just a, a little boy, um, I, I have memories of, of being inside the academy there where he was a, uh, an assistant instructor and watching him, him teach and train. And I got started in some Kempo there. When we moved here to Oklahoma City, in fact, uh, he was pretty young. He was only about eight years old. I, I can re never really remember a time in my life where I wasn't doing martial arts. And of course in those days we were very much doing Muay Thai, boxing, the JKD concepts. We were doing a form of grappling, Shuto wrestling. You know, he was kind of looking for work and he became a physical therapist. Through Deaconess Hospital, my boss actually got me contracted by the hospital to teach at the Excel Fitness Center. It grew so big that uh, you know, the demand was there for, for him to um, open an academy. So we tried to expand, get more room at the hospital, but the hospital wouldn't go along with it. We kind of started off like he was teaching the class at the hospital and also training um, in, in our garage. You know, he kind of decked out his garage into a little, a little school. So that's when I decided to go ahead and open up my own place. He opened the school that was nearly 20 years ago. I opened up the first location on MacArthur Boulevard. In the early 90s, he, he you know, was uh, introduced to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu through the JKD Instructors Conferences. At the IMB Academy with Richard Pastillo, Dana Rosano. And at that time, I was, you know, I was still doing some JKD, Filipino martial arts, and Muay Thai um, kickboxing. Through the training, which was about two weeks long, we, had a, we experienced different types of training every day. And one day, Richard Pastillo brought in the Machado Brothers. And I remember that they 
actually got down and sparred with every one of us and literally just tied us all up in knots. There was nothing we could do with them. And immediately I thought to myself, I've got to learn this. My favorite thing about jiu-jitsu is that it's for everybody. Um, athletic, non-athletic, you know, everybody has their strong points. Every, there's different styles, different games to play. Uh, it doesn't matter what your body, tops, uh, body type is like, you know, you can be short, chubby, tall, skinny, tall, chubby, short, skinny, you know, it doesn't matter. There's, there's something for everybody. But one of the things I really liked about jiu-jitsu was it was very laid back, um, you know, uh, compared to wrestling in many ways, is wrestling can be very, very explosive. Jiu-jitsu can be a little bit more, especially because we wear the gi. Uh, you know, the, the grips, it, it, it really slows things down, makes you really concentrate and focus on your technique. I just find a lot of, a lot of benefits of, of being able to kind of mentally relax and, and roll around and, and learn moves that can potentially save your life as well. You know, in jiu-jitsu, that's kind of so much about training and stuff is about dealing with adversity. Uh, on the mat, how you're going to deal with being put in a bad position, getting submitted, or actually being in a good position. All those things, kind of all those different emotions um, you have to deal with. And the same thing in real life and being a police officer, on certain scenes you have to deal with certain emotions, knowing how to kind of keep yourself cool uh, and deal with the public in a, in a respectful manner, same way you deal with your training partners. It's everybody's martial art, you know? Um, and that's, that's the greatest thing about it. it. It doesn't matter if you're a frail old man um, or a young stallion, you know, or, uh, you know, maybe a petite woman. Um, it's for you. It doesn't matter. It's still yours. Anything last weekend that caught you off guard, whether you got swept somewhere, okay? Maybe, you know, you felt uncomfortable or not sharp enough for some defense, okay? Escapes from side control or escaping from the back, you know, anything like that that uh, could be an area that you've neglected for a little while, attack it and uh, just kind of troubleshoot. All right, let's make it productive. Go ahead and grab a partner. One, two, three. Let's do it. Dallas. This Saturday, I have a super fight at the first World Jiu-Jitsu Expo. Um, it's the first time they're holding this event. My original opponent was K. Ron Gracie. You know, he's a probably 22, something like that, um, son of uh, Carlos Gracie Jr. And uh, he's been a black belt for a few years, one of the top guys. Uh, and unfortunately, he got hurt. Um, and I found out about that Tuesday night. And then this morning, Wednesday, uh, they secured the replacement. And it's going to be Lucas Leitch, who is a former world champion. In fact, he won the Worlds the year that I did um, in a lower weight class. And I've kind of gotten smaller, and he's gotten a little bigger, and I'm real excited. We, I've never faced him, and he's a you know, um, you know, a great, great competitor. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. In fact, it's kind of funny because I, I teach a lot of the things that he does. Um, it's not necessarily my game, but he has a probably one of the best half guards out there in the world right now. And um, you know, for for the guys, my students that like to play half guard, I always refer to him as someone they should watch and study, and I actually call it the Lucas Lage half guard. So it's it's kind of funny, you know. That now I'm I'm actually going to face Lucas Lage. So okay, a couple things. He's doing. I know. First, he'll use this grip a lot to help pull, give you the base, and then get in. Okay, so he's doing, he's doing this a lot, all right, um, and he's doing that knee bump a lot, you know, or, or kind of like, kind of like, you know, going like to bring you this way to just suck you in, okay? I was working on that tonight, uh, totally different thing to, to deal with when I'm on top, um, but, uh, you know, I feel good. A lot, like I said, a lot of my students play his style half guard. And so I grabbed a few of the guys and, you know, they're not, they're not Lucas Leitch, obviously. Um, so it's going to be a little different when I'm on him, but I know what I, what I need to do. And, uh, and I have my strategy in place and I'm looking forward to it. A lot of the stuff he does is similar to Bernardo, but he's like 30 pounds lighter. So. Are you going to offer the back half by straightening your right back? No, I'm going to stay back. 
I've already, it's been working perfect. We did it like 20, 30 times and I never got put in it. It always goes for your right leg. Stay here. Don't let him get a grip with this hand. Stay back. Fight him off. Bring my knee up. Yeah. Start to get here. Yeah. I'm going here. As he turns, come here. Or if he gets the underhook, immediately I'm switching. If he goes deep, immediately here. On the wrist, lift the arm. I'd, I'd rather be here. The Super Fight card is going to be streamed. Every, you know, it's getting a lot of uh, publicity. A lot of people are really excited about watching um, these matches. You know, there's besides for myself and the main event, there's quite a few other matches featuring some other Gracies. Everyone's been watching it, and I always tell my students, you know, to study and watch footage any chance they get. And uh, you know, numerous times the world is ADCC. They have these streams, and not only do they want to watch everyone else, but of course they want to watch me or uh, watch Professor Raider if he's there or anyone else that, that's competing. Even though they're not with me out there, um, you know, they're still with me. Uh, I carry their their energy with me. You know, I'm, I'm always thinking about them and thinking about you know all the hard work that we put in here um, in Oklahoma far away from these big competitions it, just like it's a special moment for me whenever I win um, I know that they're back home there watching and hopefully it gives them a special feeling for them to watch me win and uh, you know watch me go out there and battle and give my all and uh, you know that's something that I always always try to do is, is fight with all my heart and passion and um, you know that's all I can ask of them. So I have to, I have to uh, be the, the example. You know, I have to be the re the representative of them. And um, so, you know, at the end, I'm gonna look in the camera and I'm gonna see all of them back home. And uh, you know, it's gonna be with me with my arms raised. I met Rafael. Actually, I I met him a long time ago, back in like 2003 or 2004. Um, I trained under Senior and did some time at, uh, at Lovato's Jiu Jitsu. Um, then when I ended up leaving there for a while and took some time off of Jiu Jitsu, I met Rafael about a year and a half ago through uh, actually when I was working with Professor Rader. Tired? I don't get tired. He was coming in here a couple times and started bringing Rafael in here and Rafael came in here and, and we've kind of built up a, a squad of them. As a black belt, this is the first year he's really coming in lighter, in better shape than he's ever been, stronger, and I think he's going to bring a, a physical presence as he's kind of matured and gotten older. The first time last year we started with eight sprints, and that was about six weeks before Worlds, before uh, this was in uh, October, yeah, right, right around October, before Rafael uh, repeated on the, the no-gi Worlds. And the first time we did eight, and then now we're up to about 14 to 15 consistently each time with, uh, and it's, it's really no problem for him. Is it hard for you? No, sir. Yeah, got it easy. Nothing. Well, you know, the world championships, you know, it's the world championships. Every year, you know, you don't, you don't really, of course you want to win every tournament you go into, but if you had to pick one that you had to win, it's going to be the world's. Um, it really doesn't matter what happens that year. If you win the Worlds, it was a good year. My first Worlds was in 1999, so every year of my life since I was like 15 years old um, has been about winning the World Championships. You know, I feel stronger than ever. I have, you know, obviously I'm very experienced now, so uh, I know what it takes, you know, I know how to train. I know what I'm up against. I'm familiar with all my opponents and you know, at this point, I just I, I couldn't feel better. I'm so confident, and I'm just ready to get on those mats and and show what I can do. My name is Xande Ribeiro. I'm from Brazil. Right now, we're in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we're here in a training camp for the World Championships 2012. Uh, Lovato just got in town last night. And, uh, you know, the sword is already sharp, now it's just time to polish. I want to kind of like... Yeah, get on my leg again. Get on your leg again. That's the whole thing, because you can never... I, I, so I, I, whenever I... 
Took the elbow, took the shoulder beat inside. Ah, uh, yeah, now, now I can mash. Turn, I'm fine. Yeah. And, uh, it's always great to have him around, uh, you know, because I think uh, through all these years we've been training together, uh, he he actually is the evolution of, of my game. You know, it's like Saulo is a, a very basic concept. I evolved into a more intermediate, you know, style of Jiu-Jitsu, and then Rafael is actually the one that keeps our eyes open to the new techniques, you know what I mean? Uh, I was doing the, the, the Shiloh. Yeah. How this does that? I tried to do it. Is there anything you thought him different? But he was catching a lot of people. Yeah. Shit. He does from close guard. On the collar. But he grabs the collar or yeah. just go here? No, he goes. That's a problem. A lot of times you don't want to. I was trying to do it, but he, he does this one. Yeah, and then usually the guy will stand. And then he hooks the leg. Yeah. He gets really tight. Yeah, because I, I, I kind of like. There was one time we were here, before, right before you the kind of went, no, your arm went the other way, like this. And then when you turn, I, I did it, so, but see, my this angle is good for that, huh? Yeah, you squeeze your knees and butt my shoulder. I have to do more here, yeah? Use your knee and butt, yeah, there. Okay, uh -huh. so I have to actually do this one back Yeah, here. squeeze. So this inside has to go behind my elbow. Yeah. Yeah. Just push behind me and then just block my shoulder. Yeah, now here I can't turn. Yeah. That's what I was kind of like trying to do, but I think I was too open. And then you, you kind of like gave this. I think he's he's doing it all, and, and he's really a, a, a big example for me. You know, to not just inside the map, but outside. You know, and I'm always happy to. Yeah, come on, man. It's just it's the truth. You know, there's no reason for me to re try to say something that's not when it is. You know. And a lot of people, I even tell Rafael, you know, like, uh, if you go watch Gracie Barra, Atos, Alliance, there are like a hundred people. You know, you walk on the mat, there's like 30, 30 black belts, you know, all those tough guys. And it's me, him, and Saulo. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're able to accomplish all of that. So that's, that's really show me how special we are in our own world. You know, we don't need a hundred, we need just the right ones. And, and, and I believe, for me, I have the best partner that I could have asked for. That's right. And I'm bringing the Mohawk back. <laughs> That's you right. can't do it anymore. Yeah, I got my boldness back. I'm shaving up tomorrow. I'll be shiny. Trey, who was always on this floor? Hey, that's a quick Yes, sir. <laughs> Alright, so tell me what we're doing and why we're having to do it. Faust is a procrastinator, as usual. But better late than never. He's got to catch up to the rest of the team and get his mohawk done. I've never done this before. So, what? let's see how it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just, we'll just start with the sides. Part. Just start with the sides and see what happens. <laughs> Just, just an even cut. Is all I'm asking for. Okay, let's go ahead. Check off. Trying to dust this up. Bring that off. Rim service. Maybe. This is an excellent start. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> We're off to an excellent start. So bald on the side. Oh, dude, my mom is gonna be so pissed. I told you, you should have went to a professional. This is the price now you pay for. You got one size. Procrastinating. It's my first time. It's a pretty intimidating look, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. Let's see where we're at. Dimension wise. Hold on. Stay up. Look, look at look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Should I rock it? I'm not, I'm, not scared, I'm not scared to rock it, dude. I'll I'll rock it. <laughs> I'm not afraid to fight this guy with this. <laughs> not afraid. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> I do that myself. It's like something died on your head. It looks like a toupee. I totally. Messed up. Dude, I'm totally cool with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally cool with this whole look. Oh my god. Okay. It's terrible. Let's let these guys get some rest.
<clears throat> See you back in the room. You look sharp. You look real sharp. <laughs> a million dollar like a man. Gentleman. Rafael is like the best jiu-jitsu gi competitor really ever. Uh, and not only is he that, like he kind of came up in a place like Oklahoma City where nobody would think that, um, well you wouldn't necessarily think to be a wellspring of jiu-jitsu. Um, Lovato went out, did his thing, uh, competed, got through the ranks, and then made Oklahoma City um, a hot spot for jiu-jitsu. Uh, so he's an inspiration to all of us. Um, BJ, BJ Penn won, um, that, that was sick. And then uh, most recently, Lovato was the last one to do it. And that really gave me the confidence that it's possible. You know, it's possible. It wasn't a fluke, you know, BJ wasn't a fluke, but we had another American who did it. So now it's, it's for sure, it's stamped that Americans can win the world title, we could be world championships in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The second American to win Black Belt Worlds, and to do that like that, do it as big as he did it, is amazing, you know what I mean? Big, huge inspiration, I said you can see, in my life and as my career, it's always been a, been a uh, Lovato's been a big inspiration. So, man, not only is Rafael an unbelievable competitor, I think he's one of the best spokespeople for jiu-jitsu, Brazilian or otherwise, that you can ask for right there. You know, he made history here in 2007, taking his first gold medal. Uh, I'm hoping to be here and watch history a second time as he takes a second gold medal. Uh, you know, so looking back on 2012 and, you know, uh, everything that happened, you know, it was, uh, it was another awesome year. Uh, you know, for sure, competition-wise, there's always the, the highs and lows. Um, you know, uh, at the end, I, I try to look at it and you know, know what kind of work that I put in. And, um, you know, even though the bronze at the World Championships wasn't what I was there to, 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 to win, you know, I wanted the gold, I wanted that title, um, trained really, really hard for it, but, um, you know, it was home and day that time, um, just like at the Nogi Worlds, that was Tussa's time, so all in all, the year was amazing, you know, um, being out there and, and, and showing my jiu-jitsu and, and, you know, hopefully inspiring some people out there in the audience and people that watch my, watch how I could compete and everything else, like, that's what what really like what I live for is that feeling of being out there and and doing what I've done my whole life and and uh, you know testing my skills and being there with my guys my team um, you know and the work the, the journey you know that that process you know of, of training really hard and getting ready for something and, and going out there and uh, you know trying to show all your hard work you know that that journey that visualization and, and the grind day to day of of working towards a goal, but I'd have to say that probably the highlight of the year, um, arguably probably one of my best performances ever that I've ever had was was at the Meta Morris, and and I was just so happy to be a part of something like that. Whereas, you know, the other competitions have the prestige and the title, but I think the Meta Morris was the bigger event, um, had a bigger stage. You know, the the media and the marketing around it, and the hype and everything that they did. Uh, you know, people all over the world were were sitting in their academies on their mats watching that card, watching that show. My team, my team had such a great year. Um, you know, we won more world medals than ever before. Uh, you know, in, in our team titles, we were second place at the, at the Dallas Open and the Houston Open. We won our third Grappler's Quest Texas title in a row. You know, the school grew more than what it ever has, you know. I was able to hire more staff members than ever before. Just the, the growth and the energy uh, inside my academy is better than what it's ever been. What's happening, it's almost surreal sometimes, you know. When I look around and I see like multiple black belts and brown belts and, and you know, all these people on our mats, it's like, you know, thinking back to where we started, you know, it's just so crazy. Uh, just those sort of things like just mean so much to me. It, just so many great things happened this year. You know, I was able to, re to release my first instructional uh, series and, and you know develop a, a member site. You know, really exciting things um, where I feel like I'm impacting 
you know, more people than ever before. I just look forward to, to continuing with that and keep making each year better and better, um, you know, on and off the mat with my school and my, you know, my challenges that I face, you know, out there in competition and just continue to just keep doing my best and learn and, and experience the amazing things that life, life throw at me.